The worst thing a movie can do is make you feel nothing, for it is an inherently emotional medium where you're supposed to be left thrilled, scared, happy or sad. And then there are movies that want to make you deeply uncomfortable in a very specific way, by dialing up the awkwardness to such egregious levels that you're left wishing the floor would open up and swallow you along with the movie itself. These 10 movies, though basically brilliant in their own right, each served up a scene so tough to watch that it left viewers sweaty with anxious secondhand embarrassment. So, with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with the 10 most cringe worthy scenes in amazing movies. Number 10 Travis and Betsy's Date in Taxi Driver. There's nothing that Martin Scorsese can't do as a filmmaker, so it's fitting that way back in 1976, he unleashed one of the all-time most cringeworthy movie scenes upon audiences. At the end of Taxi Driver's first act, PTSD-afflicted war vet Travis takes the object of his affection, Betsy, out on a date to the movies. Except, Travis doesn't take her to any regular cinema. It's a porno theatre, and when Betsy expresses reluctance to watch a dirty movie, he assures her that normal couples do this all the time. Cut to Travis and Betsy watching the porn film, with Betsy quickly growing visibly uncomfortable until she angrily leaves and Travis goes after her. Betsy then hails down a cab while Travis awkwardly attempts to stop her leaving, being totally oblivious to the fact that taking someone on a second date to a porno theatre might be ill-advised at best. From the moment we see where Travis is taking Betsy, it's like watching a slow-motion car crash. We all know what's going to happen and can do nothing but watch the deeply embarrassing outcome. Number 9. Jackson Pees Himself in A Star Is Born 2018's remake of A Star Is Born is a regularly devastating look at the destructive power of alcoholism, as Jackson Maine attempts to conquer his demons while fostering the career of singer-songwriter and his future wife, Ali. Jackson's alcohol abuse becomes increasingly severe, affecting his relationship with Ali and resulting in a number of publicly embarrassing episodes, the worst of which occurs at the Grammy Awards. After Ali wins the Best New Artist Award, a wasted Jackson joins her on the stage and stumbles around, all while Ali tries to retain control of the situation. But before Ali can finish her speech, Jackson urinates himself on the podium, his trousers becoming visibly soaked through as Ali attempts to cover him up and then he passes is out. Public embarrassment is always tough to watch, but on literally one of the grandest, most high-profile stages an entertainer can ever have, it's absolutely excruciating to watch. And while the cringe might have been mitigated if it led to Jackson finally getting sober and putting his life back on track, that's tragically not what happens. Number 8. Rose Saves Finn in Star Wars The Last Jedi Regardless of your opinion on its storytelling particulars, Star Wars The Last Jedi gets so, so much right, and for the most part feels like what a modern Star Wars movie actually should be. But Ryan Johnson's divisive sequel isn't without its corny moments, and nothing tops the woefully gooey scene where Rose saves Finn from sacrificing himself for the greater good. During the final battle on Krayt, Finn attempts to drive his speeder into a First Order cannon to save the Resistance, but Rose refuses to let him die, swooping in on another speeder and ramming Finn out of the way. The cringe arrives in force when the pair reconvene in the speeder wreckage and Rose tells Finn, We're going to win this war not by fighting what we hate, but saving what we love. And just then, as the cannon fires an explosive shot at the Resistance HQ's blast door, Rose gives Finn a smooch before quickly passing out. Even staunch defenders of The Last Jedi will struggle to stick up for this scene, which in terms of its writing and overall execution just doesn't work as intended. Number 7. Mike's Answering Machine Message in Swingers there are cringe-worthy scenes, and then there are scenes that make you so uncomfortable that you immediately wish you were literally anywhere else doing literally anything else. Such is true of the infamously unbearable answering machine scene in Doug Liman's fantastic comedy Swingers. The scene sees newly single Mike making a sweaty, awkward mess of leaving a voicemail message for a woman he met at a nightclub earlier that night. Mike, racked with anxiety, rambles through his first message, resulting in the machine cutting off before he can finish reading out his phone number. He then calls back to complete the number but screws up again and keeps making more mistakes on subsequent messages as he grows more nervous, until the woman eventually answers the phone and tells him to never call her again. 
Lyman does a fantastic job dragging the scene out for three soul evacuating minutes, while John Favreau's awkward performance will be discomfortingly recognisable to all the chronic overthinkers out there. There's blocking your own shot, and then there's straight up firebombing it with your own self sabotaging anxiety. Nobody can blame you for skipping this scene on repeat viewings. Number 6 Kim's Speech in Rachel Getting Married Jonathan Demme's low-key drama Rachel Getting Married saw Anne Hathaway receive a Best Actress Oscar nomination for her phenomenally authentic performance as Kim, a woman released from rehab for a few days to attend her older sister Rachel's wedding. Kim's attempts to reintegrate herself into a family with evidently mixed feelings about her culminates in an unforgettable scene at Rachel's rehearsal dinner. As friends and family toast the wedding, Kim intercedes by grabbing the microphone and launching off on a rambling, painfully self deprecating four-minute speech nobody asked for. Kim spends almost her entire time with the mic talking about her struggles with sobriety and time spent in recovery, all while the assembled dinner party awkwardly looks on, as evidenced by some first-rate reaction shots of the mortified guests. After what feels like an eternity, Kim finally ends the toast by tearfully apologising to her sister for everything she's done, and to the surprise of no one, Rachel isn't too pleased about Kim hijacking the rehearsal dinner in an attempt to make amends. Falling somewhere between a bombing stand-up comic and a person you barely know wildly oversharing, Kim's speech is basically the worst wedding speech you've ever sat through in your life on steroids. Number 5. The Love Scene in Blade Runner Blade Runner is one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time, a technical, aesthetic and storytelling landmark which has proven enormously influential on the genre ever since. But its legacy is coloured by a single scene that's aged like milk left out in the baking sun all day the so-called love scene between Deckard and replicant Rachel. After Rachel saves Deckard from death, the pair return to his apartment and soon enough he kisses her. Rachel responds by trying to leave the apartment, but Deckard pursues her and forcefully slams the door shut, preventing her escape. He then pulls Rachel away from the door, forcefully kisses her and instructs her to speak with consensual desire for him despite, as evidenced by her tears and general discomfort, being anything but okay with the situation. What was excused in 1982 is put under considerably greater scrutiny today, and what was once called a love scene is better described today as rape. While some choose to defend the scene as reflective of Deckard's own contemptuous attitude to replicants, it's made even worse by Blade Runner 2049, which paints Deckard and Rachel's romance as a thoroughly loving one, no matter that the instigating act wasn't unambiguously consensual. Number 4. Truth or Dare in 8th Grade Bo Burnham's feature debut, Eighth Grade, is effectively a feature-length exercise in cringe, a warts-and-all look at the routinely awkward experiences of an anxious eighth-grade girl, Kayla. But Kayla's story takes a sharp left turn from typical high school shenanigans into something darker at the end of the second act, when she gets a ride home from the mall with a friend of a friend, Riley. Riley soon enough stops the car and gets into the back next to Kayla, where he quickly instigates a game of truth or dare. Riley ends up removing his shirt and then dares Kayla to do the same, but she refuses, causing Riley to angrily put his shirt back on and drive Kayla home, while insisting he was only trying to help her get some sexual experience. While there's undeniable relief among viewers that Riley doesn't get any more aggressive with Kayla, his attempts to manipulate her into doing what he wants feel so stomach-churningly believable, from negging Kayla to making her feel like she did something wrong when she rejects him. The writing and acting are phenomenal in the scene, as they are throughout the movie, but this near 10-minute sequence will understandably be too close to home for many. Number 3. Talia Al Ghul's Death in The Dark Knight Rises The Dark Knight Rises may not quite reach the heights of The Dark Knight, but it still delivers a thunderously entertaining, operatic and emotionally gratifying finale to Christopher Nolan's Batman saga. That is, however, in spite of a much ridiculed moment that occurs during one of the film's most crucial climactic scenes, when villain Talia Al Ghul dies from injuries sustained during the final vehicular chase. As Talia expires from her internal injuries, she rattles off her death monologue, lets out three big puffs of air, and then shakes her head while closing her eyes. It's shockingly poor acting for a performer of Marion Cotillard's calibre, feeling closer to how a child might act out dying in a school play than, you know, one of the biggest blockbuster movies of all time. Cotillard herself has even expressed amusement with why Nolan picked this take for the final film, which lives on as a widely mocked meme that somewhat underscores the impact of a highly important scene. 
Number 2. Marge meets up with Mike Yanagita in Fargo Fargo is without question one of the Coen brothers' finest movies, but more than 25 years after its release, audiences are still baffled by the toe-curlingly awkward scene in which police chief Marge Gunderson goes for dinner with her high school classmate Mike Yanagita. Mike makes it abundantly clear he has romantic designs on the very pregnant Marge, and though she politely brushes off his rickety advances, things take a horrifyingly tough-to-watch turn when Mike reveals that his wife recently died before breaking down in tears. As a shocked Marge tries to comfort him, he confesses that he's lonely and regrets attempting to initiate anything with her. Per the painfully believable writing and performances, it's an agonising divergence from the main plot, though at least has an amusing payoff later on when Marge learns that Mike was lying. He was never married and the woman he claims he married is still very much alive. While many pawn the scene off as unnecessary, it's ultimately Mike's duplicity which prompts Marge to consider the possibility that Jerry Lundegaard is isn't being truthful, as allows her to eventually solve the central case. Number 1. Spin the Bottle in The Perks of Being a Wallflower The Perks of Being a Wallflower is a fantastic coming-of-age drama packed with discomfortingly authentic depictions of the teenage experience, and never more so than during its infamous Spin the Bottle scene. At a party, protagonist Charlie is dared by his friend Patrick to kiss the prettiest girl in the room, and after thinking for no more than a few seconds, plants a passionate lip lock on the object of his affection, Sam. This wouldn't be a problem if Charlie's girlfriend, Mary Elizabeth, wasn't sitting right next to him, causing everybody else in the room, including Sam, to immediately recoil in horror. Patrick sums it up when he reflexively says, Oh, that's effed up, and both Mary Elizabeth and Sam storm off. Even though it's clear that Charlie shouldn't be with Mary Elizabeth and has feelings for Sam, he deals with the situation in an extremely careless, tactless way, enough that many viewers can only watch the scene play out through splayed fingers. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed anything, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.